Moving to the Portland metro area and looking for new construction, well, this is the video for you. Stay tuned to learn more. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from Portland, Oregon. And today we're going to talk about all things new construction in the Portland metro area. A lot of people are relocating to the Portland metro area, specifically looking for new construction. And it's no surprise. I mean, some people don't really like new construction. Some people like older, either more historic homes or just homes of a certain era. A lot of people like mid-century modern, for example. You can get a lot of that in Portland and in the Portland metro area but of course there's certainly going to be an allure to new builds and there's going to be a lot of benefits to buying new construction as well so we're going to start this video out by talking about the benefits of buying new construction and then let's talk more about where you can find that new construction in the portland metro area so of course buying a brand new home something built in the last two years or something that's being built right now of course it's going to be new and shiny so it definitely has a little more of that appeal to it just something that is brand new you know again has that shine to it you're not going to have to worry about a lot of deferred maintenance or you're really not going to have to worry about any deferred maintenance so if you buy a home that's 10 years old or 50 years old or 100 years old you know there's this ongoing list of things that uh, you know you're going to want to know okay has this been done when was the roof last replaced has the plumbing been replaced has the electrical been serviced or replaced? You know, when was the furnace installed? All of those things down the line. And when you get into new construction, you're not gonna have to worry about that deferred maintenance. So you're not gonna be hit with uh, having to get a new furnace or hot water heater in the first couple of years, for example, which is not all that uncommon. And you're not gonna have to worry about remodeling either. Now, some people like to get into an older home. They like to remodel, make it their own. Uh, I've found that even people with the intention of doing that, it can be a lot easier said than done to actually get into a property and uh, go through a remodeling process. Now. For some people that might be fun. I, I know a lot of people aren't necessarily looking for that. And when, when you're getting into a, a brand new home, you know, you're not going to have to worry about having to do any remodeling. I think probably at most, uh, you might need to come in and do some landscaping. So sometimes new construction and brand new homes are sold without really any landscaping put in. So you have kind of a blank slate to work with. Now, now that is something that you can negotiate with the builder. Um, you can write into an offer or into a contract, hey, here's our purchase price, here's our terms, and we also want you to put in you know, some sod grass, we wanna put in some, some mulch and some bushes and some flowers over here, uh, you know, and things like that. And that's, not, uh, that's really not all that unrealistic to be able to get a builder to agree to that. But either way, if you did buy new construction, you could be inheriting um, kind of a, a just open space that, yeah, you know, you then have the opportunity to make your own. All right, and before we go any further, if this is your first time to the channel or you've been here and you haven't already, if you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. We've helped so many people relocate to Oregon and move to the Portland metro area. And as real estate professionals, we love to help with that process. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. Either way, we would love to help with your move to Portland. Now, another benefit of buying new construction is both during the contract period um, and after the sale, uh, the builder is going to make sure that everything is done right and that there aren't any issues. So when you put in an offer uh, for a, uh, a new for new construction for a brand new home, you know you're buying from the builder, right? And they are going to let you do your due diligence and perform your own inspection but they're also going to do a walkthrough with you, sometimes during that inspection period, but also right before closing to document any issues. So if there's scrapes and scuffs and dings, um, anything that needs to be corrected, typically they're going to walk through the property with you. Um, they can note all of those things with you and they're going to take the steps to correct those issues. Uh, and that you, you know ha all happens before closing. Now, after closing, you're going to have typically a one or two year warranty on the materials. Um, you're going to have after a year and potentially after the second year as well, uh, the builder will come through and do another walkthrough with you. 
Um, one of the biggest things with new construction is when you have a brand new home, it's going to settle a lot. So in those first couple years, in the first year after a home has been built, you'll get some of that settling and you'll see some cracks here and there and things like that. And so a builder is going to come in and take a look. They're going to make sure that, you know, all the caulking is still there and uh, there aren't any issues that they need to come in and correct. So a lot of builders are going to be really good at making sure that uh, some of these issues that can take place in the first couple of years are going to be corrected. Now, there's a 10-year builder warranty on the structure of the home, the structural aspects of the home. Um, so there's a, a pretty good warranty that you get into when you buy new construction that you don't get when you buy just your typical resale home. And, you know, again, when you're buying a home that's 20 years, 50 years, 70, 80 plus years old, there's a lot of question marks. Um, now, when you're buying new construction, you have direct access to the builder. Again, you're under their warranty. You have an opportunity to walk through with them. You, you can ask them questions. You're not going to get that same experience when you're just buying resale. So there's a little more transparency there um, as far as any issues up front and any potential issues in the future and actually having a solution on the table to correct those things. And there's some additional benefits too, purchasing directly from a builder. So a lot of builders are going to be more inclined to accept a contingent offer. So when you are purchasing resale, you're purchasing typically from, you know, somebody who occupies that residence. They're probably buying their next home as well. And they might be in the same scenario as you where they need to sell before they buy, or they might need to look at doing like a home equity line of credit or making a contingent offer. And they're gonna be less likely to accept a contingent offer because they want some assurances that they can move into their next home. So a builder, you know, whether they're building four homes or 40 homes, um, you know, they're building this inventory. Um, it, it's purely a business decision. If they can get somebody under contract while the home is being built or if it's just completed, um, you, you know, they might want to look at your, the property that you're selling and have some assurances there, uh, just like a regular homeowner would on a resale property. But uh, there's not necessarily as much risk built in for them. And so we're seeing and hearing from a lot of builders um, that, yeah, I mean, hey, send us an offer with, with uh, a contingency that you know, the, the buyer needs to sell their home before they can close on the purchase of the new construction. And more often than not, that's going to be something that would be totally acceptable to a builder. And for you as a buyer, I mean, that's like one of the most tricky situations in real estate. And that's kind of what everybody tries to wrap their head around. If they own a home, they need to buy a home, but they need the equity from the home that they currently own to buy their next property. You know, how do you make that timeline work and how do you move the funds and not carry two mortgages? Well, again, Getting in uh, with a builder to purchase new construction gives can, you know can potentially give you a little more flexibility there. Uh, a lot of builders too right now are working with their own lenders that are offering really great incentives. You know interest rates have gone up quite a bit as you probably know um, in the past six months or so and they're kind of holding steady they could go up a little bit more they could come down they probably will come down eventually but you know right now we're seeing like rates around six and a half a lot of lenders are offering rates in like the high fours so they uh, so a lot of builders are offering this incredible incentive to buyers to not only get into a, you know a nice newly constructed home maybe on more favorable terms with a seller where maybe there's a contingency involved you can also potentially get a really really great rate uh, builders are also going to be willing to negotiate a little bit maybe buy down your rate a little bit more or cover some of your closing costs potentially so you know the market has shifted quite a bit this probably wasn't the case as much, you know, 18, 24 months ago, uh, because builders didn't necessarily have to do uh, a lot of these things. But right now, because a lot of buyers have been taken out of the market because of higher interest rates, builders are offering a lot of great incentives uh, to purchase from them. So that can create a really favorable scenario for a buyer. All right, and lastly, when you're purchasing new construction, a lot of times you have the opportunity to choose your own finishes. So um, if a home is being currently built, you know, they kind of, they have a model that they're building and then there's going to be a number of different options for you to choose from as far as paint and countertops and fixtures and doorknobs, you know, you name it, you have an opportunity to do a lot of kind of the finishing design for your property and really make it your own. Um, now, you'll see in, in some scenarios, you know, builders are just building spec homes, 
you know, they, they've purchased like a half an acre and they're building, you know, three or four properties um, on this piece of land. You know, they have the plans in place, they're building it. You might have the opportunity to choose your finishes, maybe not in some cases, uh, but there's a lot of communities around the Portland metro area where dozens of homes, um, hundreds of homes in some circumstances are being built and they have, uh, you know, uh, each builder is going to have five, maybe 10, maybe 12 different models that you can choose from on a particular lot. Um, and then within that, you can choose your finishes and really kind of be involved in the process as far as, again, customizing the, you know, the finished product to your liking. Okay, so where are you going to find new construction in Portland? Like I mentioned, we have this urban growth boundary that as this expands, more land opens up, builders come in, you know, clear the land, get it ready to build, get all the permits, and then get rolling on that. So we're seeing that out west, out east, and in the south. Uh, the biggest area of new construction right now that you're going to see is south of Hillsboro, west of Aloha. So this is going to be an area called Reed's Crossing, and I think the plan for development um, expands over like a five to ten year period with plans to build uh, somewhere around 8,000 homes. And there's a lot of homes that have been completed. There's a ton of construction that's still going on right now there's a few different builders so there's different characters different options um, you know you're not just pigeonholed into working with one particular builder that only has a few different models uh, the, the whole area um, you know is going to have uh, kind of a unique characteristics uh, you know depending on what area of, in Reed's Crossing you are depending on who built where so point being is there's an incredibly high volume of new construction going on here. Um, there's going to be a lot of different options for you, anywhere from condos to townhouses to you know five or six bedroom, you know four thousand square foot homes, and everything in between. Uh, this is an area that, uh, like a lot of areas that are being really built out right now, are really far from the city center. So a lot of people moving out west into that Reed's Crossing area are probably going to be working in Beaverton or Hillsboro, working for Nike, Intel, and a lot of the big companies uh, that are headquartered in that area. Um, and you know the streets are built out. Uh, you see a lot of vacant land that's still going to be built up. So the way it looks now uh, is completely different than what it's going to be, you know, in, in five or 10 years. And there certainly uh, needs to be a lot more infrastructure built into the area in regards to commercial development. So convenience stores, um, entertainment, grocery stores, things like that. Uh, there's not a ton right there in the immediate area. Um, Hillsboro is not too far, Alo is not too far. Um, you know, you do have some things out there that you can get to relatively quickly, but it's not a very walkable area aside from the walking paths and parks that are around there, which are really nice. And that is a benefit too of uh, getting into new construction. A lot of these more newly developed communities are going to be built with walkability in mind. So not necessarily walking to a coffee shop or shops or restaurants or bars or things like that, but there's going to be a lot of paved walking paths and green spaces and parks so you can get out and walk around, get some fresh air, walk your dog, all of that. So there's a lot of other areas too where we're seeing some new construction. That Reed's Crossing area, or if you look at Hillsboro uh, and do a search for new construction right now, there's 56 homes available. But if you get with some of these builders, they're going to have the opportunity to purchase properties that aren't listed on the open market, uh, but they have all this land and all these uh, home plans that you can you know, definitely start the process. But as far as uh, homes that are ready now or will be ready in the next couple of months in Hillsboro, in Reed's Crossing, 56 homes available right now. Now, if we go over to Happy Valley, Happy Valley is about as far east as Hillsboro is west. So you're pretty far from Portland. Uh, definitely a very suburban area. Not as much co commercial development and industrial development out there. So in like Beaverton and Hillsboro, you have a ton of businesses, a ton of job opportunities. You're not going to have that as much uh, in Happy Valley. But Happy Valley is an area that's really, really been developed over the last 20 years. So Beaverton, Hillsboro, a lot of this west side, yes, there's a lot of new construction, but you get a lot of mid-century to 100-year-old homes, everything in between. Happy Valley, you drive around and everything is new. I think the average home sold in 2021 uh, was only nine years old in Happy Valley. And uh, right now there are 79 homes on the market that were built in 2022 or newer. Uh, so a lot of opportunity for new construction and newly constructed homes in Happy Valley. There's also this 
corridor out Shoals Ferry Road that kind of runs straight southwest from downtown Portland, go all the way out Shoals Ferry and you get to this uh, big, beautiful new high school called Mountainside High School. And just past Mountainside High School, uh, they're developing 450 new homes in this area. Uh, and there are, I think, at least a dozen builders that are developing here. Uh, really beautiful, rolling hills. Um, you know, you just go uh, a quarter mile west, southwest, and you're in this beautiful countryside. There's wineries, uh, but it's also very accessible into Beaverton, South Beaverton, South Beaverton in particular, like uh, Murray Hill and neighbor Southwest, this area, which a lot, of, a lot of uh, which has been developed in the last 15 or 20 years as well. Uh, from this area, you can get uh, just a little bit south, and you get into the backside of Bull Mountain. Bull Mountain is uh, a really, really nice sought-after suburb. Uh, really, it's a part of Tigard. A lot of it is unincorporated Washington County, but it's Tigard address. Uh, but this is also an area where you you kind of you're up the the backside of this hill, so you know it has some pretty good elevation, uh, but it makes for incredible views. So if you're driving around Bull Mountain and driving around a lot of these areas where they're building homes up there, uh, pretty good chance that if you don't have a view from your house, uh, just driving around to and from, you know, commuting or you know going out to the store, going for a walk, you know, you're going to have these. Uh, beautiful sweeping views in a lot of different areas. Wilsonville and Sherwood are also two communities that are really uh, developing still and, and have been developed a lot over the last 15 or 20 years. Uh, the average home in Wilsonville was built in 1999, so that tells you a little bit uh, about you know, kind of how new a lot of the development in Wilsonville is. There's about 25 new uh, homes on the market that are new construction. And in Sherwood, uh, I think there's 32 or 33 homes on the market right now that are new construction. But these are communities that are, you know, definitely feel a lot more removed from kind of the, the urban city center. Happy Valley is definitely pretty removed to the east, but you can get into a lot of southeast Portland pretty quickly. Uh, similarly, in this Reeds Crossing area in Hillsboro, you can get into Beaverton and you know to some more of kind of busier commercially developed um, a little bit more of an urban feel type area uh, and, and then you know of course from these areas you have you know direct shots into Portland but in Sherwood and in Wilsonville you're buried a little bit further south uh, these kind of feel like communities that are a little more like bedroom communities than than suburbs that kind of bleed into to one another, um, you know, from Portland, like a Beaverton into Hillsboro or a Milwaukee into Happy Valley, for example. Uh, really great communities, though. You know, they have about 20, 25,000 people each. Um, and a lot of development going on. These areas are, you know, have a lot more rural space surrounding them. So again, they're right up on that urban growth boundary, uh, but really great communities that I think a lot of people that are looking for a little bit of a slower paced area tend to gravitate toward. All right, there's a lot of development too going on in Beaverton. Now, a, a lot of new construction that you see in Beaverton, um, same with Portland too, and some other suburbs, uh, you're, you're just gonna see a lot of like teardowns. Um, so there might be a property that you know, had a small home, it's a half acre, you know, uh, two thirds acre, something like that. Uh, you know, maybe they tore the house down and, and built up, you know, some new houses there. So you're not getting as many of these big developments, but in Beaverton, you have this South Cooper Mountain. It's a lot of it's really actually a LOA because it's a LOA uh, schools. It'll, it'll go into a LOA high school, but Beaverton School District, still kind of an extension west of Beaverton, kind of on the south, southwest side of Beaverton. Um, Cooper Mountain, this is a really beautiful area. This is an area that really flies under the radar. I think you are a little bit buried here. Your access into Portland isn't as good. Home prices do tend to be a little bit less in this area, uh, which when you're going around the area, it feels like this really nice area with some luxury real estate, some luxury homes. Uh, but again, it, it's just not as convenient as far as commuting to and from the area or again, getting into Portland. And proximity to Portland uh, really holds a lot of value. A lot of communities that have quick and easy access into Portland that are in the suburbs do tend to have a little bit of higher home prices. Uh, but this South Cooper Mountain area, um, it, it's again, it's really pretty. It's kind of like Bull Mountain, uh, not quite as big, uh, but you have this elevation change. So you have like these steep hills and windy roads. Um, and again, there's just a ton of new construction and new development going on here. Overall in Beaverton, there are 62 homes on the market that are new construction. So quite a bit of new construction in Beaverton. 
You'll see some of this too on the north side of Beaverton where you get into unincorporated Washington County, areas that are north of Highway 26 like Cedar Mill and in particular Bethany. Bethany is an area that you know, 20, 25 years ago was just open rural space uh, and now you have all these different developments uh, and you know everything from townhomes and condos uh, to big beautiful luxury real estate some of the most expensive real estate in all of Portland which uh, I think part of in part has to do with its um, kind of sneaky easy access into downtown Portland because you can take highway 26 or take Burnside it's kind of a straight shot uh, from Bethany uh, into the city. Now there are a few other areas that you might want to consider that aren't within that urban growth boundary. So you have uh, like Newburgh and McMinnville, so this Highway 99 West corridor. Uh, if you go through Sherwood and you keep going south, you get into Newburgh. This is when you really start getting into wine country. You pass through Dundee and then you get into McMinnville. Um, so there is some new construction going on in these communities. Uh, you're gonna get a little bit of a better deal probably because real estate isn't necessarily as expensive in these communities because they are quite a bit further from the city. Uh, but if you are looking to move to the Portland metro area, you want to be in a little bit more of a small town uh, than a suburb. Uh, Again, Newburgh, McMinnville would be really great options. Also an area called Forest Grove, which is just west of Hillsboro. Um, so still relatively close to the city. You can get out Highway 26 or go through Hillsboro and Beaverton to get into Portland from Forest Grove. And there is some new construction going on there as well. At any rate though, there's definitely going to be some options for you all around the Portland metro area to get into some new construction. We talked about a lot of the advantages. There's certainly a lot of benefits of getting in new construction. Probably the biggest gripe and probably the biggest downside of buying new construction is you're almost always going to have a very small lot. You know, So when these builders come in to develop these areas, they're maximizing the volume that they can build you know, within, uh, you know, the allotted amount of land. And uh, so that means that, we, you know, the, the homes themselves end up having these pretty small yards, a little bit of a front yard, a little bit of a backyard, pretty close together on the sides. Uh, but uh, benefit there, you know, not a lot of upkeep when it comes to yard work and maintenance. On the other hand, you're not gonna have as much space to move around. It's gonna be a little denser. You're gonna be closer to your neighbors. Um, but uh, I think a lot of people who are looking for new construction understand that. And I think the benefits for them at least outweigh you know, having that smaller lot. So if new construction is something that you're interested in, if you wanna learn more about some of these communities, if you wanna talk about some of these builders, that's another thing too. There's a lot of variation, right? You have big national builders, you have regional builders, people that build like in the Pacific Northwest, and then you have builders that are, you know, uh, only building in Portland. Uh, and, and so there's gonna be pros and cons uh, probably to working with anybody, um, you know, in that range. Uh, and those are things that we can talk about. So if you want to talk about it more, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video. Schedule a Zoom call with us and we can talk about some new construction communities. We can talk about your budget, a timeline. We can put together a game plan for you. So when the time comes, we can hit the ground running. If this video was helpful, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. And if you want to get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, we really appreciate you watching. And until next time, we'll talk to you later.